I think that it's just something I never thought I would miss out on. I always thought I was going to be able to go to her house and have breakfast and spend time and see people in general. Um, and she was probably, you know, my grandmothers were the most careful. We were the most careful with them for sure. Um, so not being able to do that for so long and then just feeling the freedom to actually be able to sit across the table with her um, was just something that I guess I never knew I would ever have any limitation on. So having that limitation and then all of a sudden being able to do it again was just so freeing. Welcome to Waking Up to Life with Rabbi Josh. It's a podcast built around conversations with people in our community who have found moments of enlightenment in their lives. Now, while these moments may not seem life changing, I think that they'll reveal how people see the world and how it's changed their experience around us. So this informal conversation and perhaps a few insights from Jewish tradition may change your life as well. And if not, it's just 18 minutes with me. So l'chaim, to life. Today we welcome Dr. Danny Wygoski to the show. Dr. Wygoski is a pediatric resident at the Children's Hospital of Michigan and is going to share a story today about something that enlightened her during this pandemic. Danny, it's so good to have you on the show. Thank you. It's good to be here. So while we've known each other for many years, you were first a member of Temple Israel, one of my youth group congregants, a member of our executive board, and now grown up to be a doctor in your own right. I learn from you every day. And, and again, today, I want our listeners to be able to hear a story that happened to you this year that I think changed the way you see yourself and your relationship to others. So share with us what happened. Um, so it was actually a couple of weeks ago after an entire year of not really walking into my nine-year-old grandmother's house. Um, we used to have brunch there almost every weekend, every other weekend. Um, so for the first time in a year, me being vaccinated as well as her, I was able to sit at her kitchen table and have a very quick lunch with her and go on a long walk standing next to her um, and being able to be close to her. And that was um, the first time that that has happened in a, a very long time. So it was pretty, it was pretty cool. So it's interesting to hear you talk. I would think that as a young physician working in a hospital setting during this COVID pandemic, there would be maybe stories of uh, intimate experiences with patients that might be your moment of enlightenment, but it's not so. It's really this simple time with your grandmother that has reshaped the way you see the world. Why do you think it was such a simple time that made such a big difference in your life? I think that it's just something I never thought I would miss out on. I always thought I was going to be able to go to her house and have breakfast and spend time and see people in general. Um, and she was probably, you know, my grandmothers were the most careful, we were the most careful with them for sure. Um, so not being able to do that for so long and then just feeling the freedom to actually be able to sit across the table with her um, was just something that I guess I never knew I would ever have any limitation on. So having that limitation and then all of a sudden being able to do it again was just so freeing. I think so many of our listeners can relate to that story as we've been separated from the people we love. And I can't help but think of a piece of Jewish tradition from the book of Ecclesiastes that suggests that there is really nothing new under the sun, that even these little moments are moments that we come back to over and over again. And if we just look at them differently, they'll really change our lives. And I know that your grandmother is a Holocaust survivor. So how do you think the pandemic has affected her and your relationship with her in context of that reality? So I think that it's funny how fragile we were with, we were being with somebody who is just inherently so strong. Um, you know, she 
did she was in Poland in Warsaw that's where she grew up when the war started and she um, did some pretty amazing things just as a nine-year-old kid trying to survive the Holocaust and so when you look back and kind of think about how we weren't we were not even letting her get her own groceries and we were wiping down the bags that came to her door um, it's just so um, it's so funny how um, we were so careful with somebody who inherently is very strong. Um, and I th think that from her standpoint, she at sometimes probably liked not having to do anything, not having to cook, not having to, um, be a host at all. She probably very much enjoyed it. And she probably enjoyed us coming and, you know, being there, even though we weren't close to her. But I think for many of our grandparents, and I'm sure that other people can echo this, that they've, they've dealt with loneliness that they've never felt during this year. Um, yeah. And yet she's so strong, as you said, from being a survivor, both in the Holocaust and now once again through this pandemic, mm -hmm. it is remarkable what we can learn from people of strength because they, they carry that with them for a lifetime. I, I know that recently there have been efforts in New York and here in Detroit to vaccinate members of the survivor community because mm -hmm. we see them as such an important part of our history. So I'm assuming having a grandmother who is a, a survivor for you has been part of your personal story as well. Oh, a hundred percent. My grandparents being survivors, um, my grandfather as well, has shaped my life significantly. Most of my college career I spent studying the Holocaust and it was a passion of mine um, and I'm proud of where I came from. Um, so I don't know that I would be the same person if my grandparents hadn't been able to tell me the stories that they have shared um, with me and my family about their, their survival in the war. You're, you're being so modest about it. I know, I want my listeners to know that uh, during your time as an undergraduate student at Michigan State University, Part of your senior thesis project was to translate the memoirs of your grandfather to tell his story. And I, I wonder, what, what did you learn from that moment and this modern inter, in, interaction with your grandmother that is important for my listeners to hear today? I just, I think it's so important to, to continue telling these stories, whether it's somebody who's passed away or somebody who is still living, like the, these stories of the Holocaust and the war are, are going to die with this generation. Um, so from that aspect, I'm very passionate about being able to share their stories, um, either my grandfather's memoir, which is something that is very near and dear to my heart. And then through my grandmother's stories as well, who she doesn't have them all written down, but through me, through my voice, through my mom's voice and my siblings and her and my aunts and uncles, like her story is there. Um, so to be able to share that strength is something that is so important to me to, to share to people in my generation as well. Um, and the generations that are to come, because we are probably the last generation who will be able to hear these stories firsthand from all of these Holocaust survivors. Um, and it's just an ode to all the strength. I know that a lot of people struggled throughout this year with many, many different types of, of um, struggles and life changes and, and all, of, all of the things that come with the pandemic. But um, it's always good to remember like where I came from. And I think that might be also why this intimate moment with your grandmother recently was so powerful to you, because lacking that opportunity to really share simple moments uh, with such little time left, I think, is, is changing the way you see the world. Yeah, and it was just so, it was so great to be able to walk in our house and sit down. And science is so amazing, being able to you know, after three weeks of being vaccinated, it gave, it gave me the opportunity to have that interaction back that I had been, that me and my entire family had been missing out on. So I think that um, it made me feel incredibly grateful and it made me feel great grateful that I was able to get vaccinated pretty early because of what I do. And my grandmother was able to also get vaccinated pretty early because of her age and her being her. So um, I think that from that standpoint, it was, it was a very special, special moment. 
But I know that your grandmother is a very special woman and I know how much she cares deeply about you and your siblings and, and all of your cousins. So uh, I, I'm sure that was really a powerful time. I, I'm wondering, I, I'm gonna return to Jewish tradition for a moment here because I can't help but think of uh, a phrase from rabbinic literature that says, and it translates to mean, if you turn the Torah and you turn the Torah, it's like a diamond that each time you turn it, you see into it a different facet, different nuance, something new. I'm wondering if this experience that you had with your grandmother has translated into your work as a pediatric physician in the hospital. Are, how, how has it changed the way you treat your patients and their families? I went into pediatrics mostly because I wanted to be able to be a voice for, for these kids. Um, and I think that it goes along with my passion for telling stories that can't be told otherwise. Um, you know, some of my kids are older and they can give their own histories and explain why they're not feeling well and explain what's going on. But some of them are babies who can't. And I rely on the stories that the parents share to me to be able to be a voice for their child. Um, and then I, in turn, am a voice for all of them. So I think that it's pretty ingrained in my, my passion for what I do is storytelling and making sure that people have a voice. It's so important to understand that uh, these children who, as you said, don't really possess their own voice yet have somebody like you to hear them. And I, I, I would assume that that means that when you walk into a patient's room and you're talking to a patient and their family, that you are so much more attentive than perhaps you used to be recognizing that every little moment of that connection matters in terms of your treatment plan. It, it, without giving names, without telling a specific story, it, do, does that resonate with you that you're really a better listener because of what you've experienced with your grandmother? Oh, for sure. For sure. I think that you know, it's really important to get the small little details. I mean, there are many times where my grand, my grandmother just last week was telling my mom stories that she had never heard of before. Um, and it's not because she didn't want to tell them. It's just because she hadn't had the opportunity to give those little details. Um, and I think that there's always more information that you can, that you can gain from, from somebody when you're trying to to talk to somebody about what's going on with them or what they've been through. There's always something else to gain. There's always more of a conversation to have and there are always, there are always links to be made. So um, from that standpoint, I think that my communication from my work in Holocaust uh, studies and things like that has definitely carried on to what I do every day. And it makes the parents feel like they're being heard and I think that that's one of the most important parts about pediatrics is that you make the parents feel comfortable, that you hear them, that you know what is going on, and that you're not glazing over small details because you don't think they, they, that they matter, because they do. They really do matter. It, small details really matter, and connections between people really matter. It's so interesting to hear you talk about this, because on a micro level, in the relationship between you and your grandmother, it matters on a slightly larger macro level with patients in a hospital setting, it matters that you hear their stories. And then I think the lesson to be learned today is that even on a macro level in our society, we really are at a crossroads right now. We need to start listening to one another and to really hear and to be able to understand and, and, and integrate different realities so that we can be a better world community. It's something that I struggle with every day because I think that as time has gone by in these last few years, we've really separated from one another. And I'm assuming you're seeing that also in, in the hospital setting. Oh, yeah. And I think with, with what has gone on with the pandemic in the past year, it has shown me so much more even how important that connections are with people um, after not being able to physically be close to them. Um, so I think that it, it, while the pandemic has brought on such despair and term, turmoil, I think that it also has taught a lot of valuable lessons that a hug goes 
a thousand miles when you can't give it. Um, and that just being able to hold somebody's hand or to be with them and give your parents a hug or to console somebody, it goes so far when you realize you can't do that. And then the moment that you realize, okay, maybe you can, maybe we can start doing this again to some extent, it's, it's a pretty powerful feeling. So we're drawing towards the close of this podcast. I know you can't be your grandmother's voice today, but if you could help us understand what she would say in this moment, what do you think the, the, the most important lesson is from your experience with your grandmother that our listeners could take away? I think that everyone, if you, if you feel love towards somebody, there are ways to show it without being physically there. I think hmm. that it's important to remember that even while we're not physically able to be together, emotionally, there is a lot of support we can give to those who are struggling. And God willing, we'll be able to then give hugs and kisses sooner than later. <laughs> this crazy time is over. I hope so. So with every one of my guests, I have a final question that I'll ask. Uh, I didn't prepare you for this, so I hope I'm not pulling you off guard. It won't be too scary. Uh, is there a book or an article or a television show that you have been watching in these last six or seven months that uh, has sort of given you new perspective in the world that you want to share with the listeners? There is one. Um, it's called, I think you should talk to somebody. Um, it's written, I think, by a psychiatrist or psychologist about her own, own struggles with her life through the eyes of her patients as well um, and it is written beautifully and it's just it teaches you a lot about about being able to deal with the things that go on around you and in this world of people who are struggling with mental health that idea of being willing to talk to somebody is so powerfully important i think this may be one of the uh, undercovered elements of the pandemic is the impact on mental health. Uh, a beautiful. I, I really thank you for sharing that title. It's called, I think you should talk to somebody. Mm -hmm. Great. When we, when we put the podcast together, hopefully I'll be able to get some references and we'll put that in the description. So people will have access to that book. Awesome. Well, it is so, so wonderful to see you and to talk mm -hmm. to you and to hear these amazing stories about your grandmother's strength and the intimate moment that you had with her. I'm so grateful that you have been willing to come on and grateful for our friendship and our connection of a lifetime. Uh, I'm really excited that we had this time together. And I hope that all of our listeners have learned something today that they can take away and that you'll come back and join us in future episodes as we attempt to wake up to life L'chaim to everyone.